So, um, Eva, congratulations for your offer at McKinsey. Um, can you tell us how did you receive the happy news? Did they call you directly after the conversation or um, how did they uh, do this? And also, what was the feedback here from your process with them? Um, yes, so I actually got the news quite early on. I expected to wait at least a week or two, which is usually what I heard that that's what it is. But I actually heard only a few hours after my final interviews with the partner. So I was very, very happy about that because I think I was a bit um, not nervous, but I just really wanted to know. I was very happy. And um, I think I received some feedback after my Uh, well, second and third interviews about some uh, potential improvements to be made and also some um, kind of strong suits. But after the final interview, it was mostly very positive feedback and everybody seemed very excited to uh, welcome me to the team, um, both the HR and the people I had the interviews with. Everybody was very, very lovely. So I was very happy. Okay, very good. So um, it sounds like a pleasant experience here you had. And um, maybe in, in terms of the last round, because this is an, a common question, right? Was there a big difference that you experienced or was it like um, pretty much what you have expected? It was very much what I expected. I think, um, especially through this program, there is a very clear description of what the interviews were going to be. So mm -hmm. it was pretty much what I expected. I think I did mention that uh, the The, the last conversation was uh, very, very pleasant and was very social. And I think uh, there were more kind of personal points that I was asked um, compared to the other ones. But overall, it was the same structure and very similar things as I expected. Okay. Yeah, we can also only second this, right? So there is no big difference in between the initial rounds and also the final rounds. What is different usually is that partners have this ability and skill to give you a case in a regular conversation, right? So some people are missing the uh, point then when they actually should uh, switch gears, right? So this is what we are now and then seeing. But um, from an overarching perspective, um, I fully, fully second that. So if you reflect back on where you have been when we were starting the coaching program, right? And also looking into your development path throughout that journey. So what are your thoughts here? Was there, or uh, what was the most significant challenge you needed to overcome on your way here? Um, yes, I think, well, when I was starting this program, I didn't know anything about casing, uh, nor I didn't know much about MBBs either, to be perfectly honest. So I think I still remember the first call that I had with City and um, kind of he already there, I started feeling more comfortable because a big challenge for me in the beginning when I was considering um, going, going for consulting was that I started looking up information online about consulting. Yes. And there is a lot of them, which is great, but also not so great because I felt so utterly overwhelmed with the amount of information and with how sort of scattered it was and also very contradictory. So I think uh, when I look back at starting this program, the biggest thing for me, well, two of them was that this program really sort of put everything together, like that one link to the platform that you sent me in the beginning. Yeah. Every information I needed for this entire process was literally there through that one link. So that was an enormous help. And I think the biggest sort of challenge that this really helped me overcome was that uh, the the information was incredibly concentrated and very streamlined and it really helped me sort of progress much much faster and then the second thing was and that also ties into me not knowing much about consulting is the expectations so you go very in depth about Uh, you know, what casing is, what it is that we are expected to do, what consulting actually is. And it also made me reflect on whether this is a career I want to pursue just because you explained it in a very, I think, um, kind of layman friendly, but still very consulting way of what it is that I should actually expect and what the interviews are also interviewers are also going to be expecting from me. So mm -hmm. when I look back at my development path, I think that was um, the beginning. That was the biggest change in the beginning, that once it became clear what it is that I'm trying to pursue and where it is that I'm trying to go with it, it became much, much easier for me to actually do the work and prepare for myself. Yeah, what's very interesting is um, even if you might have not been uh, or had so many contact points with consulting before, you actually lived up to the expectations you would have for uh, junior consultants, right? And that means you you always brought uh, the best perspective you have to the table, right? You never came unprepared. You made sure to ruthlessly execute on the feedback. 
And uh, you also ask, right? Whatever was open for you, um, you, you ask, and sometimes you even push back a bit, right? Which I think is a is a great characteristic, right? Because only if you ultimately understand it and its core, what is re required here, and what are the characteristics they are looking for, and why, right? Then you are also flexible enough after all that training and practicing and so on um, to bring it to the table, right? And this is something what you have done just excellently, right? So I must also compliment you on that. Um, so is there any single thing what you would say you struggled with the most throughout that journey, right? And what helped you to overcome this? I, I really struggled the most with... I think understanding what a case is, because I don't know if you remember our first coaching session, but you, you said this to me. Yes, you're laughing. I know you said this to me. It was one of the biggest feedback I got in the first coaching session is that, and I realized that now that I looked at the interviews or at the case as if it was an exam. Like I always felt that every time you ask me a question, I felt the need to just talk, 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 and say as much information as there is in my head. And which is absurd and ridiculous. And I think even back then I knew it was ridiculous, but I really didn't understand how else to approach it. And what helped me overcome it, I think, uh, well, we were three things, which is very much how this program was sort of structured, which was very advantageous because I didn't have to think about it too much, was that theoretically I first needed to understand the method on how to approach the cases. So that is very much the method on structured problem solving that's very much detached from the topic. So I didn't need to panic when the case would become about uh, an industry yes. that I didn't know anything about because it doesn't matter. It doesn't really change anything about how I think about the case. And once I started to understand this theoretically, then come to my second point, which is clarification. And it really helped me what you had mentioned. Like I could always ask you guys questions. I could just pop a message in WhatsApp and you would always give me um, kind of very lengthy and helpful feedback on how to better think about it. And that brings me to my third point. Then once I understood it and I felt like it was clear, I then practiced. And that really, uh, the also the coaching sessions, but also the peer practicing that really, really helped because as I did more and more of these interviews uh, or more and more of these peer practice sessions, it became very clear. I also saw other people do it and um, kind of seeing their mistakes and then us talking about it really helped me understand on how I can do uh, how I can get better and getting comfortable with the small things like asking for time or saying, mm -hmm. I don't know much about this industry. Could you please explain the business model or something, which is, again, the exam mindset would never allow me to do that because it would be admitting that I'm not prepared, but that's not yes. what it is. So I think this really was a big thing that really helped me kind of get through the interviews at the end. Oh, well, it's so interesting, right? Because listening to you now and listening to you um, in our first coaching session, right? What you just have done, I'm not sure if this was um, uh, accidentally or you already have internalized this, right? Was a clear structure uh, provided to me at the beginning and then going through this one by one, right? In a very concise manner so uh, everyone can follow this. You just uh, proved something you uh, might have um, learned here, right? Which makes me very happy, right? So very, very nice. Um, you can uh, just like follow you and your arguments and your flow and the points you're making very nicely. So this will help you enormously in your uh, first year as a consultant, because I can tell you from experience, um, not many of the first year consultants are able to do that, right? This is usually what you learn over time. And then, um, yeah, I would say roughly after one or two years, uh, you have mastered this, but uh, you're at a different uh, point uh, already when you're starting. So that's great. Now, <clears throat> in terms of... I have to say one thing, if I can say just one thing yes? about that. Sure. That's also, I think, a little bit, and I don't want to, you know, um, kind of kiss your butt a little bit, but it is really what is in the program, because yeah. I think the advantage of it is that all of the nonsense is out. And this is one of the biggest tenants that you have taught me or the through the program that I can't just kind of talk if anything that's in my head, but I need to be structured. And that is something that I feel like every single video and throughout the weeks, especially as the program is structured, yeah. you really sort of like, if you just watch the videos, you will start doing that because that's how 
that's a kind of the base of everything that you're doing here. So yeah, thank you for that. It's very helpful. Yes. No, no, you're, you're more than welcome. But, but you know, it's always requires then someone to take action based upon this, right? Because listening to something uh, just like Netflixing and binge watching, uh, like intellectual content is not getting you anywhere, right? Um, you also need to reflect. You also need to theoretically apply it. You need to practically apply it. You need to have the calibration, uh, and then and then you need to have the practice, right, to really establish that skill, and not the other way around. And so many uh, like approaches are didactically flawed and weak because if you start to practice straight from the beginning, I mean, what do you expect here? What kind of skill do you build? What even do you want to achieve with that, right? Except for having 100 cases, which is an input parameter parameter, right? And not an output parameter in terms of performances and offers you can then um, yeah, receive. Okay, so let's finish that up, right? Um, is there any like major point you would like to single out in giving advice to someone that is currently on their prep journey? Um, yeah, I thought about this. I came up with three. Uh, one is mm -hmm. do the work. Mm -hmm. I think um, for anybody who joins this program, just do what Yorn and City tells you tell you to do. I think don't try to be too clever about it. I think um, because the foundation is there, and I felt like because the the kind of input parameters, as you put it, were already laid out, I could do the output. So yes. if you know if the program says do the do the exercise, then watch this video and then redo the exercise. Just do it. It's like really just just do the work. Uh, also, don't forget about the PEI. Do that part as well yes. because it's very important. Um, then second would be take advantage of the cohort. I think this was a big, big thing for me because there were days where I was not motivated, especially when I got my first offer. Like I was like, okay, I got one. It doesn't matter. I did wasn't motivated. And it was really advantageous to have somebody I could text and just be like, hey, I'm not feeling it today. Today you need to push me. And then they would get me on the call. And then, you know, we do it for each other, which was super advantageous. And then third one, if you do the first two, like you do the work and you do the practice, just relax a little bit. I think a big thing for me was the interviews I didn't do so well on was because I mentally psyched myself out. There was no difference in my skill set level. I just like wasn't prepared uh, mentally for it. So, um, you know, do the mental work as well. Relax a little bit. If you've done the work, there is nothing you, else you can do anyway. So just you know, drink some milk. It's gonna be okay. You're gonna do. Do you're gonna do great. It really is not worth um, sort of uh, you know sabotaging yourself over just freaking out. It really doesn't help. So uh, try to relax. Go for a run. Do something. You know. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Very. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I can I can fully second this. I think the last. <clears throat> for the your last point, right? So relaxing at the end. So there are so many people asking, so um, my interview is now in three days. What should I now do in the last remaining three days, right? And the regular advice is focus on the core 80% of solid base, right? Fundament that and reiterate that and make sure you're not forgetting the basics, right? Instead of focusing on this like extra mile remaining 20% and uh, let me also read this and let me read this and let me get some background here, right? The, the <clears throat> likeliness that any of what you would do two or three days before the interviews would play a role in them is so small, right? It's so small. And the likeliness that what you are doing uh, when you're laying the, the ground, right, the fundament for uh, this journey uh, is applicable in your interviews is like 100%, right? So this is what you should, should focus on at the very end of the journey. And then you can also be more relaxed because you don't need to be afraid that you're missing out on the remaining 20%, right? Because usually it doesn't even matter anymore, right? Good. So... Ifa, thank you so much for um, your insights here. And uh, I am convinced this will be a great consulting journey for you, right? So you already bring a lot of the characteristics that will not only be helpful or was not only be helpful for the interviews, but also will be helpful for the job. This is what we are doing here, right? And I see a great consulting career coming for you. So all the best for you. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. <laughs>